I've had my fair share of worries about Monster Hunter Wilds ever since Capcom used frame generation to come up with their FPS numbers in their system requirements page. And with Dragon's Dogma 2 having its own performance issues, this game uses the same engine. Well, are my fears justified? Kind of. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. We're going to do an in-depth benchmark, test a few different CPUs, and see what's going on. So, let's do it. My biggest worry with this game has always been CPU utilization and how CPU heavy is it going to be? Is it going to suffer from stutters like Dragon's Dogma 2? Well, we're going to start with some pretty high-end hardware here. RTX 4090 Ryzen 7800X3D at 3440 by 1440 with DLSS quality and the ultra graphical preset. There is no ray tracing in this game, but every graphical setting is maxed out. Now we're going to look at some slightly weaker CPUs as well because I had to test them guys and the reason why is I'm in the main camp of this map here this is where there's a lot of real players quite a few NPCs the game is CPU bound 100% consistently and we seem to be getting around 60 to 70 FPS now when compared to Dragon's Dogma 2's Vernworth City it's leagues better right we're not dealing with stutters and terrible performance but it is CPU intensive and CPU heavy like Vernworth is. At the same time, I don't see NPCs popping right in front of you like they do in Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, if we leave the city and drop down into the wilds, the game is uh, less CPU heavy here. We're actually able to hit around between 70 to 80 FPS. It can sometimes be a little bit more than that. It depends on the area and also weather can vary which we are going to look at sunny weather as well in a little bit i just want to focus on testing three cpus and the type of frame rate you can expect guys because this is quite concerning these new games are very cpu heavy now this was with dlss quality what if we drop the balance well it's not going to matter much because we're going to be CPU bound. So let's go ahead and try DLSS balance. And we're still around 80, 70 to 80 FPS, depending on the area. And you can clearly see the GPU use keeps regularly dropping below 95%, sometimes into the 80s, like I said, depending on the area. But we do have frame generation. So let's take a look at DLSS frame generation and what that can do for us. Now, frame generation does actually give you a decent bump, I suppose. It gets us all the way to 120. So what that means is that we're getting 60 real frames and 60 interpolated frames. So it's okay. It doesn't feel bad. It's fine, I suppose. I would still probably rather play without it. But I think we're going to find out soon why Capcom used frame generation in their specs. And this is quite concerning, guys. But anyway, this is the 7800X3D, kind of the best case scenario of this and maybe a 14900, 14700K or something like that. But let's take a look at how the game runs on the Ryzen 5900X. All right, so I've moved over to my 5900X AM4 build, which actually has an RX 7900XTX inside. We're still targeting the same resolution, same uh, ultra graphical preset with FSR quality. Don't worry about the GPU because this is a CPU focused test. We want to be CPU bound here and we actually are very CPU bound uh, in this city. Whereas previously we were able to get 60 to 70 FPS. Now we can only get between 45 to 50 FPS in this main camp. And if you look at the GPU, it only utilized like 70% of it. So yeah, guys, this is quite concerning because a lot of people have Ryzen 5000s, right? I mean, I suspect the 5800X or 5700X 3D to do better, a bit better. But this level of performance should be what you see on a Ryzen 5800X or 5700X, 5600X probably. Very similar. But this is the main city though. What about the wilds? We should be able to get a little bit better performance in the wilds. Let's check it out. All right, so down into the wilds, actually, it's uh, much better. We're actually able to stay fairly close to 60 FPS, but it does drop a little bit below that. And that's not too, too bad. But if you look at our GPU utilization, right, we're well below 99%. So this is a CPU bound scenario. This is with FSR quality, and I'll prove it to you. Let's check out FSR balance.
And with FSR balance, we actually go... <laughs> it's the same! <laughs> it's the same. It's anywhere between 55 and 70, depending on the area. So our only other option here is to use frame generation. Let's check it out. With frame generation, well, that takes us all the way up to around 120 FPS. So it's very similar to uh, DLSS frame generation in that regard. And it actually looks fine and it feels fine too. Not too bad. And another thing we're going to examine too a little bit later is a group battle with a big enemy because I was concerned about the stutters and actually the game is okay in that regard. So that's a relief. CPU heaviness though, <laughs> it is an issue. But that is the Ryzen 5900X, Ryzen 5000 I guess you could call it. I would say it's good for a 60-ish FPS experience in the wild. What about a Ryzen 3000 though? Oh boy, I'm concerned. Let's take a look at a Ryzen 3700X. Alright guys, so I've swapped my Ryzen 5900X for a Ryzen 3700X. And we're going to start in the same area where you're still using the RX 7900 XDX at 3440 by 1440 with FSR quality and... We're in the 30s, in the main camp. Not great, guys. Not great. Now, I'm actually curious how the PlayStation 5 version of the beta runs. I was going to check it out, actually, but you had to have PS Plus, and Sony can go uh, screw themselves. I'm not subscribing to that. I'd rather just wait for the PC version. But this is not great, guys. I mean, we don't have stutters, right? So there's that, as you can see. There's no stutters, but we are dropping into the 30s in the city. But what about the wilds? Well, let's jump over and take a look at the wilds. All right, so dropping into the wilds, well, we go from 35 to 40, closer to 50, which is definitely better. Again, there is no stutter, so that helps a lot. But again, this isn't necessarily great, but it is playable, definitely. I think it's okay but it's still concerning. This is with FSR quality. I mean, why don't we check out FSR performance and you'll see the FPS will remain the same. So let's drop to performance and then we'll check out frame generation because that might be a necessity in this particular case. But yeah, if we drop to FSR performance, we're still between 40 and 50 FPS um, as you would expect, right? We've been CPU bound this whole time. So let's try frame generation. So with FSR frame generation, well, that takes us actually close to 100 FPS. Interestingly enough, it actually does double our FPS in this particular case. So yeah, I would say it's really a no-brainer to use FSR frame generation with Horizon 3000. I mean, it definitely looks better, looks a lot more fluid than playing at 50, 55 FPS. So. I guess it's good that they added FSR frame generation on top of DLSS frame generation because we didn't really have that in Dragon's Dogma. Uh, so that's nice to see, I guess. And there is no stutters like there was in Dragon's Dogma too. So that's also a nice plus. And it's also a beta, right? Things could improve. But what about uh, other issues? Is there any other issues with this beta that I've seen? Well, there was one thing that stood out to me. But I'd assume that it's something that's going to be fixed. But let's take a look. All right. So this is the game at native 4K with DLAA on an RTX 4090. All settings maxed out. And actually the 4090 can stay pretty close to 60 FPS, even without any DLSS. Right? And I look at the grass. It looks very nice. Right? It looks nice and tall. And then it begins to shrink as it becomes nighttime. Now, is this a bug or is that what the game is supposed to do? I'm not really sure, but here I was just cycling through, checking out DLAA. Now it's without DLAA, it's just native 4K, uh, using the game's own TAA. But then I wanted to see what FSRAA would look like because they actually have proper FSRAA here, which is nice. For some reason, we actually seem to get a little bit less FPS than we were with DLAA. Not a massive difference, but it's about three, three or four FPS or so. Now you're looking at the grass, it's beginning to shrink as it gets darker out. Now, I don't know if this is a bug or if it's how the game is supposed to be. But anyway, 
I went and checked out DLSS quality and it actually took us from around 52 or so FPS closer to 70. And if you remember, right, here we were right around becoming CPU bound. Remember in the wilds, even with DLSS or FSR performance, we were only getting around uh, 60 to 70 FPS. So yeah, I mean, if I had a 5090, I wouldn't really get much out of it with the CPUs that we currently have. Isn't that crazy? But then there's FSR quality and you get the similar amount of FPS. But look at now the grass has almost died. This must be a gameplay mechanic, right? Because it's a desert at nighttime, all the grass dies off. The last thing I wanted to look at was combat. So again, here we're running at 4K with the 4090 DLSS quality and the ultra graphical preset. All settings maxed out. Now the point of this was to basically check out the performance and what it would be like. Would we get any stutters during a big battle? Because this was actually a very long fight. It took me around 20 minutes to get this guy down. And don't worry, we're not going to watch the whole thing, obviously. But I ended up throwing a flare and three more hunters came and joined the battle. And guys, it actually ran pretty good. Yes, the game is very CPU intensive. Even at 4K with settings maxed out and DLSS quality, we do hit some little snags and we do hit some CPU bound scenarios. So yes, the game is CPU heavy, but I don't see those uh, nasty, uh, very noticeable stutters that uh, were present in Dragon's Dogma 2, which is great. But anyway, guys, as you can see here, the fight dragged on all the way to nighttime and then all the way down to the morning. This is up fast forwarding this by 700%. And if you look at the frame time, it's actually pretty good. Again, we do get like some tiny little hitches very sporadically, but for the most part, it's pretty good. It's at around 60 to 70 FPS. And I'm actually glad that there's no stuttering problems, but I hope that they can do some further optimizations. I mean, I don't know, I guess I might as well just give my conclusion right now. I am concerned about how CPU heavy the game is because even with some of the fastest gaming CPUs that we currently have, we can't fully saturate our GPUs, really. And that's an issue because we got our, our new GPUs around the corner. Like, I feel AMD and Intel have kind of dropped the ball by not delivering any meaningful performance gains for gaming. Well, Intel didn't bring anything. At least AMD brought, what, 5% or whatever, which <laughs> it's really nothing. But this is concerning. I'm actually planning on doing a separate video about how CPU heavy the games are becoming because it's kind of an issue. And right now, Ryzen 3000s, they don't really cut it for 60 FPS anymore for some of these newer AAA games. So, but I don't know, guys, what do you think? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Um, I don't know what else I can test in this beta. I mean, my biggest concern was why are they using frame generation? And now we know. The game is very CPU heavy, but leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. I'd like to hear your opinions and give the video a like. If you liked it, consider subscribing. I really appreciate you guys watching the comment and commenting. Let me know, giving me feedback. Uh, I do really appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great weekend. And let me know if you're going to play Monster Hunter Wilds. It's actually really good. It's a really good game that I hope can become better by the time it comes out. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.